welcome. Are you ready? Yeah, we're oh. ready. <laughs> okay. Do I start? Yeah, yeah, you just start. You okay. start. Yeah, now. How about now? <laughs> All right. Good evening, good afternoon, or good morning, depending on where you are in the world. Welcome to Raising Excellence, one of the most valuable hours of your day. I'm Michael, the MC PC for today's adventure, and today's show is about visioning and the topic, how does it feel when you get there? Continuing on our own Tim Flynn's Foundations of Self-Discovery. Be aware it's Wednesday and this is the body of, of this week's topic. So the very today, difficult exercise. Sorry, no. go. <laughs> with me today is Agnieszka, our psychosomatic illuminator. Hello. <laughs> And Willow, our trauma consultant. Hello, everyone. Uh, De Deirdre might be along here shortly. Uh, she's running a little behind. But uh, for those of you that are viewing live, if you have questions or have comments, feel free to uh, place those and we'll try and uh, address them as, as we see them. So with that said, let's talk about the body of this topic. And uh, our, our title today was, How Does It Feel When You Get There? So we, we did a little bit of an exercise. We talked about that last week, or last Monday. It seems like a long time ago, a few days ago. Two days, two days ago. Yeah. Just, your life is a lot, it's very full. <laughs> yeah, it, just, it seems very busy at the moment. But, uh, yeah, so we, we imagined ourselves at point B, we're here at A, imagining ourselves where we want to be at home. Oh, B. I have the image of the exercise. I'll show okay. it. Oh, no, that's not the go. image of the exercise. That's the, the, the yeah, there we go. It should right. be in Discord. Uh, yes, it should be everywhere. It's everywhere. It's on our Facebook and, um, and on our Twitter page. It has been shared. And it's also in the video from Monday as well. But now it's also on the screen. So our viewers cannot see us what they can see so so the idea there was to uh to imagine yourself or create the vision of yourself in the future three to five years in the future or whatever works for you and really get into that who is that person what do they what do they talk like what do they dress like what do they think what do they do what do they say all those kind of things and then look back at yourself at A, and what advice would you like to give them? And so, does anybody want to start with that? I found this whole exercise very scary. I know I'm the unpopular opinion, usually talking about like the issues that I'm having, but you know, I mean, I'm, I was able to imagine myself, like like I, I, I got the imagination going and, it's five years if everything goes right and if I do everything right, all the steps right, I will have this and this and be this and do this and da, 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 da. I have a whole list. But then when I return back to the present moment and understanding that all I need to figure out is the first smallest step to go toward that vision. And I'm still like, oh no, who am I? Who am I to think that I could be great at something? That's, that's how I was stuck at the end like this. I started out, uh, this was really, like the first step was really fun. The uh, imagining yourself three to five years. Uh, I'd like to read what I wrote. Uh, okay. I was actually just as surprised to like, to reread it and be like, oh, that is really what I want. Uh, so I said that I want to have a mastery over my own emotional states, be competent and able to respond appropriately to my environment, and I would look like a swamp witch. Wow. Because <laughs> when it when it asks like what you would wear, what you would look like, I was like, I want a very like simple, like an aesthetic where I have like a really simple wardrobe and it, everything kind of looks like I have a look. I've always wanted that and I've never been able to, to decide. Um, specifically because I just I like a whole bunch of things. I think Deirdre is in here. Have you yeah. ever been to hollyclothing.com? 
No, I avoid online uh, clothes sales place because when I can't deal in cash, wait, 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 wait. I... Swamp Witch. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Gypsy Dharma boots? Uh, no, I don't think so, but. This They're is so not pretty. this is not a show about shopping. Like I might remind you guys. There is very un this this this, this yeah. group is very unruly today. There is no cohesion. <laughs> so when I started having an issue, um was uh like stepping into the vision, like actually uh imagining how it would relate to people and what um that would feel like. That was really difficult. It took me a couple hours of just, you know, I don't even know how to describe the process of like thinking about it and not thinking about it, uh, thinking about it in different ways. Like who do and, you want to be in five years? Yeah. Oh, I should take this image off and actually show our faces. Hey, oops. But it was a little scary because not being able to imagine, like I knew what I wanted it to look like, but not knowing, uh, all of what it would look like and what it would feel like and not being able to quite grasp it um, kind of felt like I was not able to grasp it at all, not just at this moment. Uh, but I, I was kind of worried that I was the only one that felt that. So I'm glad that you also had the same problems. That's good. That's good. Hi, Deirdre. Hi, Deirdre. Now, Deirdre, our development strategist has joined us. Deirdre, how are you doing Hi. today? Yeah, I'm good. I was a bit late, so sorry about that. But I'm here now. No You're actually right you on time. Yeah, it's your turn to talk. <laughs> uh, so okay, so we should probably. Go the exercise? Uh, I was gonna yeah. say we should probably fill her in on what we're talking about. I was just being silly. Please. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were doing the steps and talking about like uh how it felt. I think Agnieszka said that she the whole process made her kind of feel like really scared and I was also relating to that because at first it started out really fun um because I got to imagine things and then I started having to like try and feel it and that didn't go over so well so it kind of freaked me out for a minute because I was like man why can't I just like embody this or step into the vision and uh once I got past that it got a little bit easier so I was good with the stepping mm -hmm. into it but when it came to when it came to them to come back to the present moment and take the first step towards that vision that's when I was having like panic attacks. Once I got over that, um, I actually got some pretty good advice. Did are we gonna continue? Like, was that part of the question? Maybe after. Let's, okay. Let's let Deirdre talk. Okay. Cool. So, what? what uh, how, how did I find the exercise? Uh, I found it difficult uh, to think so far forward for myself. So I had to literally. For me to start i had to think about okay where will i be at what will my life be like in five years time um and so i did it with my kids ages that made it a lot easier i would have a 19 year old and my youngest would be 11 so i would have um teenagers and one adult and so then that kind of made it a lot easier i'm like oh well life would just be a lot easier they i'm hoping they'll be fairly self-sufficient um uh, if I wanted to go away for a holiday or something um, or visit friends, that would be okay um, because they're, they're less demanding at that age. Um, I would only have three in school. Uh, so that that made it easier, kind of starting from... Oh. Uh, yeah, I accidentally elbowed my mute button. <laughs> uh <laughs> So when did I, what did I do from there? So I started with idols, people who I idolized first, um, entrepreneurs I idolized. I started off with their success story. So I wrote it in as my own. Uh, and then um, I was talking uh, about dreams uh, with Willow uh, and it had a, like a dream analysis. And so I typed that in and it came up with some pretty cool stuff that I'd like to be able to be in the next five years. Uh, so I wrote that down too. Hmm. But uh, like, as for starting, I guess I can always look back on it and, and go, okay, am I heading in that direction to where I want to be?
Well, that's very good. <laughs> I, I myself, uh, you know, I, I feel one of the things I feel like is, uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of have like an anchor, something that, uh, that like really kind of, um, makes it real for you. I, I you know, when I was uh, doing uh, my construction business and stuff like that, the thing for me was always wearing a tie. You know, there's something about wearing a tie that just was like a, you know, being the professional. And it wasn't something like I needed, it wasn't required for me to do it, but I would wear a tie because it kind of set me apart from everybody else as being the guy that's, you know, one that uh, you know is kind of making the decisions and, and the guy that's running the job site and the guy that's in the trailer and that kind of thing the job trailer and uh you know and just I, I don't know for me that was the thing that made it for me so trying to imagine into the future what what is that trigger because you know i rarely wear a tie anymore certainly living in mexico Wearing a tie is like crazy, you know, you'd have to be insane to wear a tie or wear, you know, even, even pants, you know, I, I haven't worn pants in like years now, you know, and so, uh, you know, exactly what, how do I go about that, but uh, yeah, I've, I've kind of got a vision of, of where I want to be at, and, you know, it's a rather big one, and, uh, you know, I guess to me, it's just, you know, I guess it's just it's just feeling satisfied would be like the major thing that I, I feel like if, if there's one thing that um, that I would like to imagine myself is, is to be like satisfied with with what I've done in, 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 in the past five years, looking five years ahead, and um, and so then you know like one of the I don't know. Do you want to get into what where our advice was, or do you want to still kind of dwell on this a little bit? <clears throat> sure, we can. Hey, can I just oh. add one thing about sure. what Mike said? Uh, I, I really liked that um, because I feel like mine's really ambitious and kind of scary to head towards. Um, you know, there's a lot to do to achieve that five-year kind of vision, uh, but. Uh, kind of stepping back and going, well, this is going to be satisfying in the next five years. Uh, that takes a as soon as you said that, I was like, oh, yeah, it, of course it will be. Um, I know how I know what I'm like as a person, and that kind of took away the the heaviness of it all, the ambition of it all, and uh, you know it, that little bit each step is satisfying. That's uh, I like that. Um, thank you. I actually wanted to add on to what Mike said as well and what Deirdre was saying when I actually got to um, step into my vision and imagine what my external life feels like and it, what I would experience. Um, I wrote, I would like to be running a small counseling business slash apothecary maybe um, and working towards creating a semi-permanent home base um, the hope is to provide trauma informed counseling and physical activities along with, uh, like camping survival activities. Cause my husband's really into, uh, survival and bushcraft. Uh, just basically I want to provide these things to like my community and friends and then draw people in. And, uh, as I was writing, it, I was like, wow, that's, that's a big, that's, that seems like it should be like a 10 year plan, but, uh, <laughs> It was also really uh, exciting to have such a big goal to possibly like reach towards. That's lovely. I, I, I really liked that um, your emphasis is on just friends and family first and then I can go bigger and bolder uh, from there. It's, um, and about your, um, your coaching it's all lovely. It's all you. I have to say, Thank your you. hair is absolutely beautiful today. Thank you. Yeah, I was really lovely... excited. I yeah. can actually say I got out of the shower and it dried like this. I just got super lucky, but I'll end up going to bed and it'll be a rat's nest in the morning. So it's great <laughs> for the camera, at least. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a show tomorrow, too, you know. Yes. 
<laughs> but I don't wash my hair every single day. So you only get this lovely look once a week, maybe. <laughs> uh, I did yeah. get some great Go advice. Um, it's really short. Uh, supposedly, this is the formula for resilience. This is like some voice that was talking to me. And it said, keep going, be flexible. When it becomes too much, focus on balance, capitalized balance. Uh, and I was like, okay, that, that sounds like decent advice for like any situation. Just kind of keep going. Don't forget to be a little flex. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I can, I can, I would say that I, that was a, a really familiar thing with me too. You know, as far as the advice that I would give myself, you know, I gave essentially, you know, just don't give up on what you feel is important. Oh, yeah, that was that other pick. Any cost. No. Ah, there we go. Your picture's up on the screen now. Never give up. Okay. <laughs> oh, great. Yeah, I, I think that's a, yeah. a really, you know, that's a, that is really, you know, the real key because there's so many times that uh, I, I've seen in the past where other, other circumstances have happened. I myself, I don't, I don't really give up on much stuff. Although I do have, you know, my failures. Um, I just, uh, but I've, I've seen people give up, like in those really difficult moments. And man, it, it hurts to see that kind of, you know, like they, they just, you, you don't, they don't believe enough. And uh, I, I just. I absolutely think that's one of the important things is if you, if you spend the time to have the vision, to, to understand your values, to, to, you know, understand who you are and where you want to go and understand what's important to you. Don't, don't give up on yourself. You know? Just, just keep pushing. And even when it looks bleak, you know, and, and this is one of the things that also is kind of, uh, as far as success goes, a lot of times it is, collaboration that actually is success you know so like they they say that you know like alexander graham bell was the one that you know I don't know what he invented the phone or something like that but the reality is is he didn't do it by himself it was a collaboration and so in a lot of cases it is one in which you know when when um things are difficult that's when you do have to reach out you know you got to find those people that can support you and, uh, you know, that, that's, for me, it's like when it's a, uh, there, there's a, there's like a, uh, a scale that's like individual assertiveness versus cooperation. And the ultimate is collaboration. And in a lot of cases, like when things are not going right, you can kind of just, you can just kind of see that, you know, I need a little bit more cooperation you know, and I'm going to be in this piece. Some people so are I not. Need to assert myself a little bit more. Some people are not that open to, I, I was talking to somebody yesterday and uh, she said to me, I've tried doing other things before and it blew up in my face. Therefore, from then on, I've stayed in my lane and I don't step out of my lane because mm -hmm. it may not work. And I said, well, whatever happened to fail forward, fail off and, and, uh, and keep trying. And she was just like, oh, she's, she was not an autonomy graduate, right? So she would never heard of that. And she was like, oh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, and that's important, you know, because like in a lot of ways when, you know, when we're working with other people, it, there are a lot of failures that happen in that regard too. That we need to overcome. Not even working with other people. I mean, you always have to work with other people because if you want to trade something for money. I mean, somehow you need to involve other people. I don't know. I guess maybe if you're like working on Bitcoin or something, I don't understand, but you still have to somehow involve other people. Yeah. Well, a lot of times it's just expertise, you know, like there's something that you don't know and maybe there is somebody that does know and, and you've got to just, you know, like, uh, you know, kind of, lower yourself or, or you know just ask a, a difficult question 
to somebody that knows. And, and you know, maybe it feels a little bit shameful, but uh, in the end, it'll probably be worth it. You know, because like, I don't know if you ever seen that the the video of the guy that, uh, you know, he essentially went on like a hundred day thing where every day he would ask somebody something outrageous. And, and this like, the hundred day challenge or something, wasn't it? Yeah, and it was it was amazing. Like how many people would actually like consider what he was asking them to do. And that's that's really kind of a reassuring thing that like most people do actually want to try and help. And, and so a lot of times it is our own, you know, it's our own inability to ask questions and ask people for help that really hinders us. Did you guys hear about the guy who exchanged a paper clip for a house? In a series of trades? He traded a paper clip for like a ruler or something like that. And then he traded, he kept trading up and trading up and trading up. And in one point it was like a lunch with somebody famous that he had because people heard about his quest. And so they wanted to help out. So a famous person traded like a lunch. Oh yeah. It was something like a globe, a like snow globe. He traded for a lunch with a famous person who collected snow globes. And then that somebody bought for something bigger like a car and eventually he got a house in a small village right somewhere in deep canada <laughs> yeah i guess it's when, the, when it's winter time in canada you get a little more imaginative there is lots of wood in canada for the winter i was gonna go back to uh what mike was saying earlier i don't remember exactly what it was but what i was gonna say was I think people um, skip over their associations with failure. Like, what does failure mean to you? Uh, if if it means that, like, or I guess, you know, like with uh, Agnieszka, your lady, who is just like, oh, I, I have a problem. Can't figure out how to solve it. I should walk away. I started asking questions like, what made you think that this was such a bad experience that you don't want to try it again? Why was it? so bad because human beings are very very curious creatures um unless something bad happens or we associate something negative with it we usually try again something bad did happen she said she had there were negative consequences but i didn't like want to pry or anything and that makes sense that's usually a lot of people don't stop and ask themselves that they're like oh i failed that means i'm stupid i that must mean that i'm stupid i'm like i'll never try again yeah Oh, there's also harsh social consequences as well. Especially in these, this, this society. Like mm. Western. Yeah, this is the one area that you have to just say, I don't give a damn. You know, when it comes to things that, you're, that you find important and what you're striving for, you really can't. You, you mm. really can't give a damn when people try and make that's that's one recurring theme i heard I, I was reading with all these entrepreneurs they just they didn't care they kept doing what they were doing um and then people started noticing them uh uh so I, and i i particularly like that like uh, it's like oh okay i know i'm a kind person but um you know i can't no matter how kind i could possibly be there is always going to be some fault, some category that I'm upsetting somebody for some reason. That's, and that, that makes that, I have to live with that uneasiness that people aren't going to like me for some reason. That's out of my control. I can't go and do anything beyond that. That's, un, that's uneasiness for me. Yeah, I, I tell, go ahead. I was going to say, I tell a lot of my clients and a lot of my friends and family uh, to learn how to distance yourself without, like, I'm not a fan of defooing. I'm not a fan of cutting off your entire family. Um, but I do think that sometimes there are people who push your boundaries. And until you learn how to uh, appropriately, like, put up your own boundaries, you do need to distance yourself, practice for a bit. And you need to really focus on your support system. Make sure the people you're hanging out with 
you trust them to call you out on stuff in a way that you know that they're not trying to hurt your feelings. So if it does hurt your feelings, you understand that, oh, I just got my feelings hurt, but I know she wasn't trying to hurt my feelings. So what was that? Yeah. And I, I always think that 50% of the people are not going to like me anyway. Like, because statistically, like, if you think about it, 50% of the people, at I, least 50% of 50, the people, I, like, but no, but the think about it. At least 50% of the people have different political, religious, uh, social, historical, cultural, whatever affiliations. And some of them may not like you because of those things, right? And I've just described like 90% of humanity. So if 50% of the people you meet don't really like you, that's not a big deal. They weren't meant to. Yeah. They have other, they, they hang I, out I with each it, other. I think of it as a third, like a third are going to like me for some reason. A third are just going to not like me. They're even going to just pick out little bits that they don't like just to try and humiliate or shame me. And then there's going to be a third that are like here or there about it. Ah, I don't really care. Those yeah. Things. That's why I, I, I like know. to I'm think gonna, of it in I'm, thirds. I'm going to offer another opinion on this one because I, I don't feel like it's anywhere near 50-50. I think probably most people are like 95% all similar in a lot of different ways. And it's just that, that they've been taught to be kind of more critical of other people in these particular areas. And, and because of all these stereotypes, they seem to think that. But that's where I think it, it, we really, when we're creative or when we're, uh, you know, really kind of understanding of other people's point of view, we can kind of be the inspiration for a lot of people, you know, because because a lot of them, when they're trying to, uh, you know, or when they appear to be trying to be critical of us, are really kind of, um, you know, uh, inspired when we basically tell them man, this is mine and I got it, you know, I'm, I'm, we're okay, you know, and, and to them, it is like one in which they can probably learn from that example of, you know, standing tall in the midst of, you know, criticism. But also there's mm -hmm. something to be said about, yeah, okay, some people who don't like me are maybe really good teachers for me because I get to see contrast and I experience adversity. But there's also a time when it's time to stop hanging out with people who don't like us. Like if somebody yeah. actually you doesn't like you. About, like haters? What about like, haters? Yeah, people just... who are not like, okay, so I may be a jerk, but if I'm all constantly having your best interests at heart, if I'm being helpful and I'm not putting you down and I'm not mm -hmm. tearing you down and I'm elevating you or at least trying to, or at least trying not to put you down, I think that's cool. But if somebody's trying like, like actually trying to tear you down, maybe that's not a good person to hang out with. I feel like we, uh, the girls come from a very, maybe not a very different perspective, but at least a different perspective. Um, I don't think this is how it's supposed to be, but there is a lot of cattiness and pettiness in the world of women. Um, we don't have strong foundations of, uh, or groups of women, uh, just like the fathers in the family have been removed or destroyed from their positions of teaching. Uh, so have mothers and grandmothers and like, so you don't get um, a good solid foundation. And I don't know, it's just uh, being someone who tries to research things and just doesn't um, feel, I still feel the need to be a part of a group, but I don't feel it so bad that I'm willing to just hang out with anyone. And there was a time where I did feel that way, where I would just hang out with any girl uh, or guy, mostly girls, I didn't really get along with other women. And it wasn't until I, actually, uh, it wasn't until I started uh, avoiding people. Like I stopped adding people from work on Facebook. I stopped adding, uh, mixing my work and my personal life. And I started being a lot more reserved. I had a lot more uh, real friends. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, but, uh, yeah. I was saying like a different perspective and I also think women are much more inclined to analyze and try to pick up on things that are there maybe they are maybe they aren't because women are much more reliant on their social network than men are 
we're biologically like when you're pregnant uh you have nine months where you're very very vulnerable you need um people there who understand what you're going through psychologically um can address those needs as long as well as uh physically and like the the support group isn't what it really should be and i think that leads to a lot of yeah. conflict so we just had a message from adam james who says that he would like to confirm with high school experiences. He's a high school teacher, right? One of our autonomy buddies, Adam. And he said, adolescent boys tend to fight physically, whereas girls tend to assault each other's reputation. And he just repeated that the same thing on Facebook, but I got, already got it on on the Discord. Thanks, Adam. Yeah. I used to tell people all the time, uh, especially uh, men who were to ask questions about like what, what it's like to be a girl. And I'd be like, yeah. If uh, you have a problem with someone, one of your guy buddies, you're probably going to go tell him. And if it goes badly, you're going to punch him in the face. You have it out on the floor and then you shake hands or you walk away. And uh, no, women will just slander your reputation until you have no social connections left and you become very susceptible to um, depression, uh, isolation. And I I, th I think that may be... Uh, a contributing factor to why women suffer from like hysteria because like are we are so dependent on our social connections and i don't i think they're being stripped away from Depend us and what century you're using that term from because yes. it has <laughs> changed <laughs> true <laughs> true the, the cure the cure was uh, very vibrators well, it, was, it was vibrators were, the cure for were, hysteria it was a, no no the, the doctors invented the vibrator because they got sick of doing it manually <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine the psychological trauma? It'd be like, I'm feeling depressed, and you go to the doctor, and they like, that's what they suggest, and you're you? like, I don't think that was a yeah. trauma. It was a very popular treatment, so much so that the doctors <laughs> had to invent an electrical device to save their arms because they were getting <laughs> purple tunnel from it. Oh my god! Yeah, there are articles. You imagine still, the you they should read. come out was that like going to like a meeting and going, right, gentlemen. <laughs> right gentlemen there's the new we, practice we, we're having issues i'm getting some arm strain are, are we all having arm strain from this yes i've got 10 women this week <laughs> this is the hysteria is out of control i had three a day today three a day this week I mean, they I start having like men's support group they're like all right yeah, yeah. you gotta do your job because yeah. you cannot Once they get into the their 40s they're insatiable <laughs> they come they want to come three times a week i just can't keep up i can't keep up <laughs> Oh my gosh. Now I understand. Oh, that, uh, I understand that Delegate. song from Burlesque where it's like Dr. Long John's or something. I was like, why is this lady so excited oh. to go see her doctor? I don't know. Yeah. It's never been pleasant for me. She was suffering from hysteria. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Well, I think we've definitely got onto a tangent. I, 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 had, yeah, something, I had something to say Mike, on topic. I had something to say on topic. Yeah. So isn't it wonderful that in autonomy, the women are actually very supportive of each other. And that was actually the first thing that I noticed because I was like, okay, so they're supportive online, but let's see what it, how it plays out when we actually get together. And we got together and it was exactly the same. Like we were all supportive of each other and helpful and nobody had any catty remarks and nobody looked at each other funny for any reason it was really wonderful it was so upfront and like you didn't have to worry about what like if you were upsetting someone and they weren't telling you like it was such a, a relief to be around people who would just say exactly what was on their mind they didn't have a problem with it and were actually there to help you help you um I have found that even the women who I have found incredibly intimidating uh, to the point where I just, I get kind of panicky trying to talk to them. Uh, incredibly supportive. Every single one of them. It, I don't know what it is. Um, I, maybe it's an age thing. Maybe it's a maturity thing. Um, I think it's I a culture thing. I don't find that yeah. on your, day, your everyday interactions. Like when you go to the grocery store and I find it very selectively in the the few friends that I have plucked out of the abyss. And it's not a maturity thing yeah. because I've worked in an office. It's well, not it's I, not I an age think... thing. Maybe it's a maturity thing, but it's not an age thing. Because they're just as bad at fifty as they were at twenty, usually, often. Yeah. Sometimes. I found there's no kind of like how I find with women that they look well around me. 
let's say like the grocery store, um, it's kind of like uh, looking down their nose at me. I can kind of like feel their their criticisms. I don't know, like uh, like for example, I put I, I had to quickly uh, get ready for school this morning. There was award ceremonies, that's why I was late. Um, and I was brushing my teeth, and I dropped toothpaste on my shirt, like not like a little bit. I mean, like a like a line. And I got to school and everything. My youngest is like, "Mummy, you've got toothpaste on your shirt." I'm just like, "Do I?" I'm like, "Oh my god, oh jeez." And and so I'm just like, "I'm like, oh, well, I don't care. I've, uh, I'm all good." Um, and there's just just this group of women just right near the fence, and they kind of started snickering. And I don't know whether it was because of me, because of my big line, but that's how I felt because that's my instant reaction because of that's the usual experience I have is the snickering is about me. But maybe they were snickering because it's happened to them before. Like No, what? they're not like this. They're not like like this, like laughing, like that. they're just perfectly always put together. Yeah, maybe. Because I remember I used to have a parrot and sometimes you wouldn't notice, but you'd have poop on your shoulder. And then sometimes <laughs> once and every now and then you run into somebody else on the street and they have poop on their shoulder and you're like, I know what you have. You have a parrot. That's what you have. I can tell yeah. by the poop on your shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're awesome. So that, that, I, I've never had that kind of feeling, that kind of that harsh criticism that I'm not living up to my social standard. I had that feeling. Uh, so when I was living in Nebraska, I lived in a really small town. And I had an absolutely no problem showing up to the gas station with my uh, giant fluffy robe, like the giant one, black one, and like fuzzy slippers. Like I just didn't care at all. And everyone knew me or, you know, mo not everyone. Uh, a lot of people in town knew me, especially at that gas station. And when I moved here, I like I went to go to the gas station one time at the end of our street. And I put my robe on and I was like, I don't care. It's no big deal. I got to the gas station. And even though it was really, really cold out, I was just like, no. <laughs> and I took my <laughs> big robe off and I left it in the car. And I was like, why did I, why did I do that? It's not a big, like, but I just felt embarrassed because I'm like, there's a bunch of people at this gas station and none of them are ever wearing robes. And I don't know. I just felt really weird. And I still haven't really been able to get over it. I just didn't think it was a, a, a big super deal. So, Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but everybody feels that way. I mean, I used to think that I was just weird. Well, I still do. I am. So I don't really, you know. Okay. Like those prissy girls, they can't really. I remember one time I was at my, uh, at my aunt's for Christmas. And I was wearing this, like, Santa hat and a short velvety kind of Christmas dress and I was all silly and happy and stuff and no makeup and then there, this girl came and she was all made up and her nails were this big with like stuff on them and and it was just like she was like every single inch of her was like co coiffured and everything was awesome right and she was sitting there like this where I was sitting on the floor with the kids because I was wearing tights I didn't care I was comfortable I was you know um, I think I still look cute, but I was comfortable. And she was just like, and then at the end she goes, oh, you must be a lot younger than me. How old are you? And it turned out she was five years younger than me. And I'm like, no, I'm like 37. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm 47 now, but that was years ago. But yeah, she was just like, oh, really? How do you look so young? I didn't say that I don't cake that stuff on my face, but. <laughs> so how do we how do we bring this back to our, our vision, vision and how it feels to be somewhere um, in the future and then and then advising well, uh, back to the person that we are today? I want to acknowledge what? Mike and uh, be, being handpacked today. Go ahead, Dee. I was gonna... <laughs> or Sam, whatever. I was going to say, I think it goes back to the second step. Like, what's your highest level of confidence? Uh, what does that look like? For me, it has a lot to do with, like, uh, being comfortable 
But um, by comfortable, I mean like uh, I don't feel confident. distressed. Uh, yeah, uh, confident, and I don't feel distressed. Like not like comfortable, as in like I'm in a nice cushy blanket. And I don't have to do anything. Just more of a like putting on pants doesn't make my skin crawl, or um, having to stress out about all of my clothes. I, I, there's this weird thing. I don't know if it's a girl thing. Uh, especially happens like right before a period or something when you're all of a sudden your clothes don't fit and there's something really distressing about going to put on your clothes and then nothing fitting and then for me it like dissolves into a meltdown so that was one of the things uh i think when when i wrote i want to look like a swamp witch i think that was addressing that where it's like i want some comfortable but also really edgy and cool clothes because i am a sad uh, not sagittarius i am a sagittarius but I'm in a sapphire at heart, and I like flashy stuff. I like to look a certain way. It, it helps my confidence level. Well, or, dear, when you're 20 years older like I am, you're going to have three different sizes of clothes for every day of the <laughs> possibility. And then you're not going to worry because you're like, oh, these ones don't fit. Let's go up size one, one size up or one size down. You always have the options. <laughs> Does it fluctuate that much? I don't that's pretty much what I like. I mean, over like decades. Find... Oh, okay. Yeah, I was I, gonna say because I only I have. It's... <laughs> I have bloated size and skinny size. Yeah, but I go up and down with my <laughs> weight too. Like I don't always stay fat or skinny or no. I've never been skinny, but I don't stay this fat all the time. I go up and down. So I have a few sizes. I even have a box of a smaller size that I go back to every now and then. Mm. Even after all of that elimination, I still have a few things that I wouldn't give up. <laughs> okay, visioning. So we can vision through clothes. I feel like the camera is stuck on me. I'm starting to feel self-conscious. Oh, that's why? Yeah, you're talking. <laughs> <laughs> <There you go. laughs> You're gonna get me going. <laughs> um, we need we need Mike to get us back on track. We need this is a what baby. Happens when you let the girls just run. We need session. an adult. <laughs> <laughs> we 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 don't even voted. know where to go from adult. here. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, yeah. Well, okay. Did um did Agnieszka or Deirdre talk about the advice they'd give themselves? I didn't write any advice. I was just scared. I ran away. I said squirrel and I ran off the stage. Okay. Uh, I did. We can have a session yeah. about that um, later, yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, keep practicing because you are worth all that hard work. Mm, good advice. Yeah, I think that's definitely one of the things. You know, I was actually reading a, uh, a Bruce Lee quote in his it says, research your own experience, absorb what is useful, reject what is useless, add what is essentially your own. And mm. I was actually talking about this with somebody earlier today. And, uh, you know, the real, the real magic of that whole thing is taking action. You know, and I, I think that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow. But, uh, I think that is, is really, you know, like what, what we're trying to do is kind of create that circumstance where we can, you know, where we can observe ourselves and observe the relationships we have and how those things are effective or not effective. You know, are they useful to us? And if so, keep them. And if they're not, let, let them go. But, that, but in doing that, we really do find what is really our own and what we can add. And when we do that, then, then we do feel that confidence that you're talking about, you know, because it, it, we become more and, and our, the, the, what we're adding to the equation seems to be growing, you know, and, and, and we do see the importance of what, you know, what we add to this thing. And then, you know, and then putting it into action is the magic, you know, that I think we're going to talk about tomorrow. Taking the first step, that's point eight, I think, from my seven steps of manifestation. It was an afterthought. 
I really liked what uh, you said, Deirdre, because um, while everything that Mike said is absolutely true, um, you can't even begin. You're not going to put effort into something that you don't find worth it. And a lot of us really do need to hear you're worth it. Like you as a person, do you have interest and skills that make you worth the effort? This is going to, even if you don't succeed in the way that you think you did, it's the skills that you're going to get, the information you're going to get is worth it. Yeah, definitely. And you're worth more than watching TV and letting your life pass by. There's a, uh, it's like a 10 minute clip. I'll, I'll have to find it um, and send it to you guys. It's about um, IFS and healing. And one of the last quotes, it was talking about what happens to your body, why it happens and how it's supposed to help. And when it starts talking about healing, it says uh, one of the first steps is you're going to have to love yourself enough to want to heal until you do that. You can't, you can't undo any of this stuff that has happened. And it's like, it's a it's super powerful 10 minute piece. If you listen to it, you will cry. Yep. All right, send the link. Send the link. I feel like, I feel like going in a moving type direction. Send the link there. and we'll share it on our Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. So what you're saying is Not you feel YouTube. like a good cry? <laughs> oh, yes, yes. Everyone needs a good cry every now and then. I, you know, honestly, uh, Tim and also Dennis, they actually did post um, kind of a, a little bit of their reflections on, does anybody want to read those, their responses? I'm not near my PC. I would, but uh, it, it's off the, uh, off my thing here. And my mic is kind of. Maybe I can bring it up on my phone. Because <clears throat> I've got it pulled up. Go, go ahead. I got it. You got oh, okay. it. Okay. You go ahead. Well, you can do one and one I can, can do, do the other. And, uh, no, yeah, there you go. Okay. I'll do uh, Tim's and then I'm going to look up that link. Uh, Tim said, the future vision exercise was good. I wanted to tell myself that you just need to keep your vision in mind and set up a plan to move in that direction. There can be some urgency and you might might not know how you're going to get there. You don't have to know. Just take the next action. Set aside any fear. Step into discomfort. Own it and move to the next step. Time is your friend if you keep moving in the direction of your vision. 5, 10, 20 years may go by. Don't forecast results. Just stick to the process and reap the learning and rewards of the challenge. Uh, also, give up your fears, set external judgments aside, recognize your value, and deliver it. So again, recognize your value, realize that you're worth it. Yeah. It's amazing yeah. because Tim is so emeraldy, and when he says, you don't have to know how you're going to get there, just take the next action, that's huge for Tim. I was really surprised to hear that. Because he's always all about process and step by step by step by step, and stuff so that's cool anyway dennis says uh my future self said to my uh present self i guess make decisions faster don't think too long about things listen to your gut make a decision and know you have the ability to deal with things however they may turn out and boy do we know dennis is true to that um establish routines and rituals for work and family Friends, workouts, spiritual growth, even eating. ID and identify and get rid of limiting beliefs, attachments, memories, and replace them with new ones that fit and enable the experience I'd like to have. Remember and reunite with who you truly are with every breath you take. That's Aww. good advice. Yeah, my inner yeah, child. I'm so, so glad you yeah. were able to read that. Because I, I think those really did uh, hit it right on the head. Yeah. Smart boys we have in the group. Yeah. Everybody. Real. Everybody. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. 
Well, should we close up for today? I don't know. Do we? Are we? Well, going? we can we can talk a little bit about what we're going to do on Thursday's show. Um, you know, essentially, I kind of alluded to it earlier. Taking the first you know, step. Actually, taking the first step. Taking the you know that magical step, which is taking action. Yeah. Um, how powerful that is. No so matter how big it is, no matter in what yeah. direction it is, it's as long as it's sort of in the direction of your dreams. It doesn't have to be that, you know, you don't have to be there tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Just and there, there is sometimes that, like, you know, there, I think there's always an opportunity almost every day to impact yourself in a way that's, you know, profound. But you know, we can, re I'm sure we can remember throughout some of the, the days or times in our lives when something occurred that like turned the switch on that said, you know what, I'm just not going to do it like this anymore. I'm going to do it differently. And I'm going to move forward. And that was a really impactful way that really changed our lives. That, you know, like really identifying that is certainly something in which we can get better at. And we can do that more, and that can become almost a daily routine if we if we really you know push it. But uh, it certainly demonstrates, I think, to everybody how much power they really do have if they make a decision and they take action. And so that's what we're going to cover tomorrow. Anybody else have anything else on that? No, I think we're good. We'll Wonderful. talk so more we, about next steps tomorrow. So uh, our shows are always on at 7 p.m. Eastern live on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, or Thursdays, I'm sorry. And uh, in Australia, it's a, always the day later, morning of the <laughs> next day. <laughs> yeah, the Friday yeah. makes sense to me. That's, that's <laughs> totally fine. <laughs> in Australia, yeah. it's Tuesday morning, Thursday yes. morning, and Friday morning. Well, it's 7 p.m. Eastern time. Actually. <laughs> in North America. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. I'm the only Southern Hemisphere person here, so it's all right. We'll just stick to the but we have some, Northern Hemisphere times. But we have some Southern Hemisphere listeners, too. Yes. Mm. Yeah, so we thank everybody's time, and, uh, everybody for their time and attention. We appreciate you spending some time with us. We hope this is very valuable. If there's anything that we can do to make this even more valuable, definitely do that. And then also, I think one of the last things I'll mention is the logical fallacy. We're doing the logical fallacy of the week again. Logical fallacy. Yes, that's tomorrow. Thing. I was already mm -hmm. going to show you guys. I'm like, no, not till tomorrow. So, all right. Stay tuned for a logical fallacy of the week on Thursday. And have and a good night said, tonight. Thank you for listening. Night. Bye. Bye.